Okay, so this is the f second video, and in this video, we are going to be collecting the user's data. So we're just going to collect all the colors from the user and put it into a second tier integer array. Uh, this is a two dimensional layout of the Rubik's Cube. So over here, you have one side, this is the opposite side of that, and so on. Um, basically, it's a second tier integer array, so we're going to have an integer located at position 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. So this is going to be useful because we'll have all the user's colors and we'll be able to manipulate these uh, in such a way that we can solve the Rubik's Cube. Now, the code that we're going to be using, especially when the user inputs the data, is green is 1, white is 2, blue is 3, yellow is 4, orange is 5, and red is 6. Okay? Now, as you can see, this would be 0, 0, and if you have a white one, then you put 2. If you have ye uh, yellow, you'd put 4, orange, 5, and so on. This will be available for you guys to download so you can use it. Also, having a Rubik's Cube that you can tear the sticker off and write numbers on it using little pieces of paper works really well too. I did that, and it works really well and is really useful. So as you can see, I started, I already uh, made the project. It's, it's called uh, Cube Solver 2 because I already started Cube Solver, that's the original program that I'm still writing. And the first thing we need to do is get the user's data or input. So I'm going to make a class called public static st static integer array that's second tier called get colors. And in this integer, in this uh, method, not class, method, we're going to have a second tier integer array called input. No, it's actually integer input new int 6 and 9. Alright, so the reason why we have 6 and 9 is because there are 6 sides of the Rubik's Cube and there are 9 pieces in each thing. Now, even though it goes from 0 to 5 for and it, the number started at 0, we can use the 6th uh, variable future in the future program, uh, which is why I always try to do one more for any integer array. Alright, now to get rid of this, we're just going to do return at return input therefore it returns and we're just going to add this class to the main method so we're just going to go get the colors from the user and then we're going to go int second tier cube underscore colors cube color space equals space new int of six and nine okay need that in there and then in order to get these colors we'll use the class that we just made get colors and there you go so now what we're doing is we have a second tier array that has six in the first tier and nine in the second tier and we're getting the colors of the cube using the class get colors all right now in this class we're going to need two counters the counters we're going to need integer counter underscore zero I'm going to set that to zero and int counter one and set that to zero all right now these will be the counters for the loops you don't have to worry about that yet next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a new scanner uh, the scanners are basically how you get input from the console System dot in, and we're gonna have to import that. So go here, add import, and I just added it to the top right here. 
Alright. So now we got the scanner. Now we have to collect the data. Now we and the first side that we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with the green side. Uh, you may be asking why the green side, that's just what I started with. So uh, if you want to follow along with the series and just start with that, the green side is gonna be this, the white side is gonna be this, um, then the blue side will be this, the yellow side will be this, and then the orange is gonna be on top, red's gonna be last on the bottom. Alright? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the data for the green side. Side. And we're gonna print some instructions out onto the console. So print and I already have this saved, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it. What it's basically saying is you're entering the colors for the green side and basically one is green, two is white, three is blue, four is yellow, five is orange, six is red. Uh, it's telling you what side should be where, so the orange side should be on top, the red side is on the bottom, the white side is to the right, and the yellow side is to the left. So that's basically telling you uh, what, where the other side should be. This is the model of every Rubik's Cube that is the original. Any Rubik's Cube that you buy from the Cube Factory um, by Rubik's Cube company will have these, the setup. Alright, any 3 by 3 Rubik's Cube onwards. So now this is where loops come in. We're going to use counter loops. Uh, loops, Y loops actually, uh, with the counters that we just initialized in order to get the data. Eight. All right. Okay, so the first side that we're going to get it, since this is a green side, every single first number of the array is going to be zero. As you can see here, zero, 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 zero. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the input at zero and at counter underscore zero. is equal to integer dot parse int of in dot next line. Okay, so what this basically is saying is while the counter underscore zero is less than or equal to eight, so it's going to go through this loop nine times because you're going to start out at zero you're going to go through it once, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And with each one, at the second integer, the second integer is going to be one of these numbers. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right? And basically, what's going to happen is it's going to get it at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And it, you're going to enter this consecutively. So the computer's not going to ask for it. This, this is the only dialog that's going to ask you for it. So you're going to be entering numbers uh, consecutively 9 times until this is over. And then what you can do is you can just copy and paste this. and this will be the second one. So all you have to do in between this is use this dialog and say enter the colors for the next side which is going to be the white side 
and then the orange side should still be on top, the red side should still be on the bottom. Now it's not the white side that's going to be to the right, it's going to be the blue side now. And then it's not the yellow side that's going to be to the left, it's going to be the green side, because that's the side we just did. And also we can add in here, just turn the cube counterclockwise 90 degrees. So let's just add that. It's actually clockwise. Turn the cube clockwise 90 degrees. All right. So once you have that down, you just copy and paste this nine times, six times, and you'll get the colors for every uh, side of the cube. The only thing that actually you have to do is you have to change the input uh, first here, uh, integer f to from zero to one and then add one consecutively until you get to eight for each of the integers. So I'll show you the finished code right here. This is the finished code. So as you can see we have the same thing that we had in the old code but then you have um, the white side and to the colors for the white side and then it's um, input at one so and then you have input at two for the blue side and put a three for the yellow side and put a four for the orange side and put a five for the red side okay so after you're done doing all of uh copy and pasting and just manipulating this uh print line and stuff you can actually build a program and see how it runs so i'm going to build it right now and show you guys what it's supposed to look like now actually we didn't need the uh, second counter so you can just get rid of that okay so this is the build and it tells you enter the colors of the green side now this is an extremely extremely primitive way of getting data if you were to make a program for a company or release a program to people for like regular users to use you would have to use try catches and other um, ways of making sure that you don't get two digits but rather you get one digit and you don't get a digit like seven rather you get a digit from one to six but because we're just doing this for fun and for practice uh, we're just going to keep it very primitive and maybe later after the series is over we'll add on to it more so let's just say that we have data three one five now as you can see I entered nine digits of data I entered a white an orange a yellow a red another yellow another orange a blue a green and another orange uh, now after those nine you're going to enter the ones for the white side. So let's just enter random numbers. And another thing is we would have to do try catches. Not only for double digits, but also for more than f more than nine fives or more than nine of any number and for not entering a number. So if we don't enter a number, then we need to do a try catch for that too. So as I said, it's very primitive. And I just clicked enter without entering a number and it gave me an error message and the build was stopped. So let's try this again. So, as you can see, all the numbers were taken, and I just uh, added a checkpoint to it. This is actually the original program, um, but you wouldn't see all of this in, in the program that you wrote, so don't worry about that. Um, this is the original program that I wrote that solves the whole Ruby's Cube. 
Um, so yeah, you got all the data, you set it into the into integer arrays, and now you're ready for the next step, which is to solve the cross on the Ruby's cube. Okay, so I'll see you next Saturday, hopefully.